So do you ever think that why Hibernate is so popular? Do you ever wonder that why we're using Hibernate when we have JDBC already? So this is one of the very popular interview questions nowadays and asked many a times that what are the advantages of Hibernate over JDBC? So trust me there are tons and tons of factors which makes Hibernate a way better than JDBC. So today in this tutorial, we're going to talk about one of the advantages, one of the factors that makes Hibernate so comfortable to work is called Hibernate supports inheritance. So today in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about inheritance in Hibernate. So let's go for that. Hi, my name is Javilas and you're watching Selenium Express. So let's first understand the first type of inheritance in Hypernet called table per class hierarchy. All right. So before we start coding, it's very important to understand the concept that what table per class hierarchy means. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take you to my presentation and I'm going to show you that what table per class hierarchy in Hypernet means. All right. So let's go for the presentation and I can wait to see you there. Okay. So let's understand the first type of inheritance in Hypernet which is table per class hierarchy with a very simple example, right? Okay, so let's say I want to build a cricket team, okay? I want to form a cricket team. So let's say I have a class called Team India, okay? So this is my class uh, and inside my class, I'll have few properties. Let's say I have a property called first name and I have another property called last name. So all my players, who belongs to this class team India will have a first name and a last name all right okay so whenever I'm choosing players I have to choose it by keeping two things in mind either he is a batsman or he is a bowler okay so let's create two different class called batsman and bowler all right okay so now let's say my batsman class have two different properties which is very unique to a batsman called batting hand and a high score. So all my batsmen will have a batting hand and will have a high score. And similarly, all my bowlers will have a bowling hand and a best figure. Okay. But if you see these classes, this batting hand and high score is pretty unique to this batsman class. But all my batsmen will have a first name and a last name as well. So instead of writing this first name and last name over here again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply extend this to, to the class called Team India because it's already have these properties right over here. So now my class batsmen will have these properties called batting hand and high score along with these properties called first name and last name, isn't it? And similarly, I want to extend my bowler class because all my bowlers will have a first name and last name as well. All right. Okay, so now we understood that we have a superclass called Team India and we have few subclasses called Batsman and Bowler. And these classes extending to this class called Team India, isn't it? So table per class in Hypernet means that all the properties of a superclass and all the properties of subclasses need to be represented into a single table. So in this case, my superclass is Team India and these are my subclasses. So the properties from Team India, which is first name and last name, and the properties from Batsman, which is batting hand and high score, and the properties from Bowler, which is bowling hand and best figure, need to be come into a single table need to be represented into a single table all right all right so let's see how okay so let's say i have a table called india 11 or india xi right so the first thing is all these properties need to be represented as columns right over here in this table called india 11 right so let's go ahead and do that so first thing is I'll have a column called first name and last name. So if you can see these two columns, these are coming from this particular class. So first name and last name belongs to Team India class, right? All right. So now it's time to enter these two properties from batsman class to this India 11 table. So let me enter batting hand and high score. Okay. 
So these two properties coming from this particular class. And let me enter polling hand and base figure properties as a column right to this particular table. And these two properties is coming from polar class as you guys know. All right. So now if you can summarize this concept, all the properties of super class and all the properties of subclasses need to be represented as a single table. All right. And this is what table per class hierarchy in Hibernate means. All right. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do right now is we are going to insert few values to these particular columns. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now let's enter a few records to our India 11 table. Okay, so let's say, okay, so first I want to enter a few batsmen's object. I mean few batsmen's to my India XI table. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So first I'm entering over here Virat Kohli, who is a right-handed batsman and his high score is 183. So as this object is coming from batsman's class, he doesn't have a bowling hand and a base figure okay but now if you have a question that the batsman class doesn't have the first name and last name property then just remember that we have extended this batsman class to the team india class which has a first name and a last name properties okay so all the properties is set right now all right okay so now let's go ahead and let's insert few more batsmen's to our india xi table so let me enter over here MS Tony and Saurav Ganguly, all right? So as you can see, MS Tony is a right-handed batsman and his high score is 183. But as this data belongs to the batsman class, he doesn't have a bowling hand and a pass figure. And same as Saurav Ganguly. He doesn't have a bowling hand and a pass figure because he's a batsman. Well, I know Saurav is a terrific bowler and he has taken a lot of wickets in his career. But just take this as example, all right? Okay, so similarly, now let me enter a few bowlers to this particular table. So let me insert a record called Jayat Khan and Asis Nehra and Bhubaneswar Kumar. So as you can see over here right now, these bowlers have the bowling hand and the best figure. And of course, they have the first name and last name as well because the bowler class extended to the Team India class. All right. But that doesn't have the batting hand and high score because we don't have these properties inside this class. So they are set to null, all right? Okay, so similarly, I want to insert an, another record to my India 11 table, and this record will be Ravi Shastri. Well, this object is coming directly from the Team India class. So my Team India has only two properties called first name and last name. So I have only Ravi and Shastri over here okay and all the other properties like betting hand high score polling hand and best figure are set to no all right well this looks good but this table has a very big problem because if you don't understand cricket or if you don't follow this game called cricket then just by looking to this table you just cannot say who is a batsman and who is a bowler and who is a coach okay we have stored data coming from different different classes like these are batsmen, these are bowlers and he's a coach. But how to identify it or how to understand who is a batsman, who is a bowler or who is a coach just by looking at this table. So there is a very simple solution that Hibernate provides us. So let's see what's that. Okay, so now if you see this particular table, this is the exact same table but I have introduced a new column over here called type. So the batsman who is coming from the batsman's class will be represented as a type called bat. All right. So Virat, MS and Saurav all are batsmen. So we have a type over here called bat. Okay. Bat represents batsman. All right. So like that, if you talk about Jahir, Asis and Bubi, they all are bowlers. So so I have taken the type as ball, right? So ball represents bowler. So similarly, Ravi Sastri is the coach. So I have represented the type as coach. So any object coming from Team India class will be represented as coach. 
Any player coming from the bowler class will be represented as a type called bowl and similarly for the batsman we can represent it by the type called bat. Alright, as simple as that. Well, in Hibernate, this particular column called type is called as discriminator value. Alright, so this is how Hibernate helps us to understand which data is coming from which particular class or which particular record belongs to which particular class. So here, discriminator value does the job for us. Okay, so this is a very simple example which help us to understand table per class hierarchy in Hibernate. Well, now let's understand the same example programmatically and let's build it step by step. So, let's go for it. So, this is it from this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to code the same example in Eclipse. Alright, so don't forget to watch that tutorial and to get the notification for that. You just subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification whenever I upload that tutorial. Alright, so see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.